our new Love Island podcast, Cracking On With The Sun. I'm Amanda Devlin, I'm Assistant Showbiz Editor at The Sun. And I'm Felicity Cross, Deputy TV Editor. And uh, I am the granny <laughs> to Amanda's glam. <laughs> it's giving grandma chic today. Oh, but, it's, um, it's gorgeous grandma chic. I feel particularly gran, um, given that today is the day that... Uh, we're starting to see the Islanders mm-hmm. in all of their yep. gorgeous bikinis with their buff bodies. And I'm here in peak <laughs> traitors knitwear. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> well, we're here because we're talking about the Love Island lineup that we Yay. now know because it's about to kick off. I'm so excited for this series. Love Island All-Stars. So we're, we're looking at across all of these series that are favourites. Put them together in a villa and see what happens. And I think, to be honest, that's what's kind of exciting about the whole thing. What will kick off? There must be so much drama between all of these people. Oh, my God, absolutely. Because I think the thing as well that everyone's really excited about for this All-Star series is these Islanders, they know each other from their series, but they also know them from the circuit, the Mm -hmm. party scene. They'll have all been in each other's houses. They may have hooked up. They might have, you know, there's beef that we don't know about and Mm -hmm. then there's beef that we do know about so should we talk about that first yes please so obvious one first of all is liberty and jake so liberty paul and jake cornish their series they looked like winners from day one didn't they Mm -hmm. they were tight as there was all of that you're my girlfriend. The, I think maybe the bracelet swap. They'd watched the previous series, basically, <laughs> and they had read the book and they thought, right, we're going to do this step by step and the, the viewers could just start to see it all crumbling down. Yeah, because it was movie night, wasn't mm-hmm. it? And she saw those those clips of Jake essentially saying he didn't fancy her. As a girl, was horrible. oh my gosh, I think that we I all felt for, felt for Liberty. She I think as well, in a breed of islanders that were so sort of glam, Liberty just felt so sort of relatable and normal. Mm -hmm. At that point, she was a Nando's waitress. Mm -hmm. She was so sweet, and it just broke her heart, didn't it? But she had that amazing, like, self-love moment of, like, choosing herself and going, no, I'm not putting up with this. And they left the series early because she said, I'm not faking this. And that was a real sort of girl power moment yeah. of that series. And that's the that's the moment I do actually remember from that series. To me, it wasn't like one of the best, but there's four Islanders from that series that are in All Stars. Yeah. And But because of their connection between each other, it's all going to kick off, we think. Because how will Jake and Liberty get on? Will there be feelings there? Because maybe time's passed, Jake's grown up a little bit. He's realised the error of his ways. I mean, he got quite a bad reception when he came out of the villa didn't he definitely he was accused of gaslighting liberty and really went quiet he went back to his day job hasn't done very much since and suddenly he's back in thrusting himself back into the limelight and the thing is as well neither of them know that each other are going into that villa so um we revealed this exclusively earlier this week um obviously the islanders don't know the rest of the cast Mm -hmm. even though we've rumored them obviously in the sun um they don't know for sure that they're going to be in there so i mean we all know that feeling of bumping into our ex at a party having to do that every day in a bikini (laughs) uh no thank you very much but do you think it might you know something might happen between them do you think (gasps) You think we might get back together? Well, I'm just saying, you know, unless it's either going to go one way or the other, it's going to be hate each other, they can't stand each other, they're not speaking. But I do think in that kind of proximity, when, you, you know, you, you, you're sort of faced, you have to get on, don't you, really? I mean, you, you have to f- be in a couple to you stay. You have to, exactly. Yeah. And I think that maybe they'll suddenly forget, forgive and forget. Oh, my God, <laughs> you're such a cynic. Other ones, of course, from that same series is Kaz and Toby. Yes. They were obviously coupled up at the beginning of the Mm -hmm. series as well. So, you know, they might, as you say, forget what went on and conveniently get back together as well. Well, that's what's really interesting about this because there's there's a lot of couples there that there's history and it, it is romantic. Does that mean that the sparks fly again? Or are they just a bit more savvy because it's their second time round? So they're going into the villa knowing what the public want and knowing what to do to sort of stay in the competition longer. What's your kind of thoughts on that? So I don't know whether you saw Perfect Match on Netflix. 
perfect match. No, I don't so think so. So basically, Netflix, a little bit like this, they brought together their biggest names from all of their dating shows. For, so from Too Hot to Handle, Love is Blind, um, yeah. some people from Selling Sunset, and they put them all in a villa in um, Panama. Mm-hmm. And initially I thought, oh God, this is so contrived. They know what they're doing. They know how to play the game. But because they knew how to play the game, it just created excellent TV. And same thing, they fell into those old relationships because they knew that they could. And it just meant that the drama was just absolutely top notch. And that's what I'm hoping for from this. We're not getting wholesome people falling in love for the first time. We're getting probably quite a produced piece of TV because Mm -hmm. these people will be producing themselves. They know what viewers want. But I think that means that it's going to be amazing. Actually better. Do you remember yeah. how with Ekin Sue, everyone said, oh, she's too good. She knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. But that's why she was one of the best islanders ever. Because oh, she, totally. she gave good telly. Yeah. Which is what we... Do we actually really care about these people being genuinely in love? Or do we care about really good telly every single night? I think night? that's what was sort of starting to irritate viewers. Was the fact that you had very very young islanders go in there you know maybe 19 20 21 and they're talking about heartbreak and that they're never going to love again they're never going to find anyone mm. and they're being um you, you know that you're following them as a journey as if they're going to be with that person forever and the likelihood is after all these series we know there's a very few amount of, yeah. of couples who survive whereas now we're sort of going into this in a different mindset and so you're totally right i think we just accept that this is going to be brilliant TV yeah brilliant stuff and I'm just so excited for it do you know one thing I'm really excited about so we've got some real old hands in the mix we've got Georgia Harrison Georgia Steele Liberty alongside Messy Mitch Mitch Taylor from this summer series Mm -hmm. who really thought he was the big dog in town and I think it's going to be epically cringe watching him try and pull one of these girls who are incredibly attractive know what they're doing and he's going to go in there trying to be Mr. Catchphrase and oh I just can't wait he got into so much trouble when he came out the villa basically he got a bit bit too big for his boots got carried away and I kind of understand it was all new to him and he came in and apparently was sort of saying do you know don't you know who I am and doing all of these kind of cringy (sighs) things that maybe these younger influencers end up doing Mm. Um, Um, But for him to go from that and then get this reality check of being in with the people who've actually made multi-million pounds from this TV show Mm. where he isn't getting much work. Um, And then just to also talk about Hannah Elizabeth. So she's from series one. Yeah. Um, And there's lots of people who watch Love Island and are massive fans now, but they didn't watch it back in the day. They may be maybe too young. Um, Hannah's now 33, which I think is great to have someone who, in who's a little bit older. I mean, not old, but she's a little bit older than being the normal 21-year-olds that yeah. we see. And that gives her maybe a different sort of perspective. She's got children. Um, it'll be interesting to see what she brings to the Definitely. villa. Definitely. And I mean, she was amazing even back in the day. Yeah. Um, if, if, you, if you guys haven't watched series one, you really should because they, spoiler alert, got engaged. <laughs> These commitment ceremonies at the end. Spoiler alert, it didn't work out. Spoiler (laughs) alert. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. (laughs) But they really took things to to the next level on series one. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Um, And I completely agree. She's bringing in a completely different perspective to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that it'll be really interesting for people to see. Um, Also series one, uh, Louis Morrison. Yeah. Who? <laughs> yes, absolutely. My sort Can of first I say who? <laughs> thought was yeah. was someone. When you think about, I mean, to me, series two is my absolute favourite, mm. sort of all time iconic series. Um, and but one was very good. It's really near to that. But he's not one of the big names that I no. think about when I when I look back at that series. So I was surprised to see him on there. What What do you think this is all about? Why is he on this? I mean, f- for me, there's a clear divide between these islanders. There's the winners and then there's the losers. And Mm. for me, he is, sorry, (laughs) in the loser camp. He would have got that call. He's he's filler, not killer. Mm -hmm. He'd have got that call. His rig's in decent shape and he'd have been like, brilliant. I'll be able to get another few sponsored Instagram posts out of this. Um, Well, that's actually a point because you've got the series one and two. It didn't didn't hit the big time until series three. So they actually didn't sort of get to have the rewards early on like the more recent Love Islanders. Exactly. So you can imagine him, you know, 
the phone rings and he said yes before he's even heard like the end of the <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Can't you? Yeah. Um, but I, it will be interesting to see how he kind of goes into it. I don't think he's going to be ex- as experienced as the other ones, no. even though he's an OG. What I think will be funny is, you know, sometimes, for example, on I'm a Celebrity, where the really famous people are just like, hi, and expect people to know who they are. Yeah. I want to know who's going to be introducing themselves <laughs> and who will feel the oh need to be like, God. hi, I don't know if you know who I am. Um, I can't bear that. That makes yeah. me feel... It, yeah, if, or, or, even on I'm a Celebrity, I find that so cringy, that moment where they introduce each other. Yeah. And you can see there's... It's usually the younger ones who are a little bit more like, oh, yeah, I'm this... Bad. And I'm you're just thinking, on Bargain Hunt. But how, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be... Oh, that would be such a brilliant moment. Yeah. I wonder who will be the one who does that. I'm thinking Louis, you're right. Hey, well, he'll have um, to. No offence, Louis. Yes. Sorry about Maybe that. he has a name, wear a name tag or yeah. something. <laughs> Pinned on his little shorts. Um, but that said, obviously, we know that Love Island has bombshells. Mm-hmm. And from the rumours that we've heard so far, there are some epic people coming up as bombshells. Yeah. So I don't think we should immediately write off these losers as I've so cruelly labelled them. Mm-hmm. But it is hard to see them stood alongside the likes of, you know, like Georgia Harrison. Her life since being on Love Island has been incredible. Obviously, she's now an incredibly brave revenge porn campaigner after everything that happened with Stephen Bear. You've got Chris Taylor, my personal favourite, <laughs> Sam and Chris. Um, Have you got a Chris Taylor crush? Oh, my God. <laughs> such a Chris Taylor crush. Do you know why? It's because he was the first probably ever that it felt like he was there for his personality as opposed mm. to the muscles yeah. um and it was yeah he j- didn't really have any muscles he, he was quite in, tall and skinny but yeah. really attractive he's, he's yeah. a nice looking boy and he came in quite late and it felt like he um they didn't make the most out of him so i think it's amazing that he's back especially because let's not forget this summer he was in barbie he, he was he was yeah. cast by margot robbie in barbie yeah and so then, if anyone's gonna have an ego maybe it should be him out of yeah. the group yeah <laughs> hi i'm chris taylor from barbie <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean so he's rubbing shoulders with the likes of messy mitch um mm-hmm. i just think those kind of dynamics are going to be interesting mm-hmm. i mean even in their promo pics i don't know if you poured over them like i have but Georgia Steele, I'm loyal. She's there in YSL heels. Mm. And then you've got others who are there probably in some like pretty little thing or something. <laughs> but I just think it'd be really interesting to see, not just compared to when we first met them, how they've changed and grown, but also how fame has affected them. Mm. And as we've already hinted, the beef that has gone on in the past. And I really hope they're going to bring that to the table. I want that night in the box at Soho. You <laughs> called me a beep and then this happened and I really hope we get that yeah I think we will but I'm not sure if this the original lineup are the ones that's going to be the worst Mm. like I said about Kaz um Liberty and Jake I think Kaz is going to have Liberty's back obviously because they've been best friends since that series yeah but do you think that Jake and Liberty are really going to go at it and be angry at each other and shout and scream I can't see it I think Jake Um, will really want to see this as a chance to like redeem his public image because as you say the reaction to his sort of gaslighting and everything was quite severe yeah. at the time but but there's saying that redeeming your image it's all well and good trying to think about doing that when you go and you sign up for this but yeah. there's there's a huge risk that it goes against you and that you yeah. go in there and you have been popular in the past yeah. you go in there and you make a mistake and suddenly yeah. you're public enemy number one and we've seen that yeah. on other reality shows doing the Roxanne palette as I like to call it <gasps> That was that must be one of the worst yeah. ever. You're right though. Again, it feels like there's probably more pressure on their shoulders this time. Yeah. Um, in that, you know, if they do want to go in and redeem themselves or try and get their career back on track or boost their finances, you know, that's a different kind of pressure, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and what that's why it would be more person. cutthroat, you know, yeah. because they actually they want to stay in for as long as possible because this is a series that you could be easily forgotten. Yeah. You know, if you go out early on yeah by the time you get to the final you'll be like oh who's that you know yeah. that's that's a long time ago so yeah. it will be more important for them to stay the more money they get yeah. out of it in the end it kind of comes down to that right. if we're being cynical let's do <laughs> our predictions okay. just based on the opening lineup yes who do you think's gonna couple up and win I, I don't see it from this original, but then obviously the Love Island trend is that it's the couple in the fir- who meet and couple up yeah. in the first. I mean, I kind of, I know this is a bit unlikely because there's a 
there's a big age gap and they seem quite different but I have a feeling about Hannah and Mitch I think Hannah will find Mitch really amusing and um I think that she'll be flattered by the attention I think he's a massive flirt he likes to have fun and I think she'll enjoy that and I think she may be looking around and seeing like who's actually here for me you know maybe don't think she's there for a baby daddy I, She's there for a fling. But I don't, don't you think that Mitch is one of those guys who would just promise that he'd be your baby daddy on the first date? Yeah. I just, I really <laughs> think that he would be up for it and he would just say, yeah, I'm going to give you the world. Yeah. And I think she would probably kind of fall for it. I don't know. Yeah. I get that impression. No. Nice. Um, Do you know who I think? Tell me. Georgia Harrison. Yeah. And Sam and Chris Taylor. I call him Sam and Chris. But she Do you remember must Salmon know dive? him. Yes. <laughs> So I think time. I think they know each other from like Shish Chigwell because yeah. they're both they're both Essexy, aren't they? Yeah. But I'm just thinking if they haven't hit it off, then what's going to be the difference? But maybe in the they villa? have. Ooh, maybe, maybe that's going to be the juice. That maybe comes it was out when she it. was with Stephen that they first met. Yeah, and I think they've both got kind of bants. They're both a bit sassy. I, could, I think they would look really good together. Mm-hmm. The public really like both of them. And she's like got that sort of really cool tomboy, messing around kind of vibe. And yeah. she always kind of attracts like male friends. Yeah. And I think that was kind of similar to like the, the relationship that Chris had with Maura, which developed yes. from a friendship into a relationship. Yes, exactly so that's like a really that. good shout, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I think that Georgia and Maura, you know, quite similar body types, like you say, quite tomboy So I think that could work really well. So that's my prediction. Any any thoughts on people having arguments? Who's going to be the first to get into a big row? The one that, I don't know what, I don't know if this is unfair, but the one that, that popped out at me was Anton, just because he yeah. took on Molly May randomly at the reunion and it was so out of the blue. Do you remember that? Um, yeah. At the, the sort of spin-off show. And they... So, it was just, we hadn't seen that there was really a problem. And then suddenly he just started, he'd unfollowed her on Instagram. They had this big Barney yeah. um, across the studio. And you'd be like, oh, where's that come from? So I think he's obviously got like a little bit, he likes to have a bit of he's trouble, maybe a bit of there. row. Yes. Yeah. I just can't get, he was the one whose mum shaved his bum, wasn't he? Oh, thanks for reminding <laughs> me of that. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I know we're going to try and keep it classy on the podcast, but also oh. that you can't you can't um, steer away from those kind of facts, can you? I oh. think that um, if they know that they haven't got like a love match brewing, and that's not going to be their storyline, they'll go for drama. Yeah, to make sure they've got the airtime. Mm-hmm. If they can't make friends with someone, if they can't have a bromance or, or like a girl mance. If they can't have a romance, they'll do drama. Yeah. And I think you're right. Anton has got drama written all over him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's uh, kind of uh, s- someone who is kept out of the spotlight in a way. Mm. But he's been a- he's admitted recently about his struggles with fame. Mm. Um, he's spoken about just eating disorders, mm. you know, and being obsessed with the gym. Mm. Um, and that's been really interesting to see a kind of emotional side to him opening up. So yeah. he's obviously grown up and it'll be interesting to see how, yeah, yeah how he gets on in, in there yeah. with other people. The other one that I really want to do well, um, cause she's obviously, she didn't have a great time in the villa. And then obviously since, um, is Demi. So obviously she had her thyroid cancer struggles. She's done bits and bobs of telly, but her health obviously has been a huge setback to everything. Mm-hmm. And I think she really deserves this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the public will really get behind her as well. I don't see her matching with any of these men, particularly. Didn't she have something with Mitch? I'm sure there were rumours about her and her and Mitch. Oh. Um, and because I think they had the same management. So they were kind of out at parties a lot together. So they know each other well. Maybe this can be a turning point from friendship into something a little bit more. But they've both got a kind of cheeky, you know, she's she's very, she's lovely, Demi. She's really, yeah. she's such a sweet girl. She's very appreciative of the, of what's happened, like, since going on to Love Island. Yeah. Um, I think she'll be lapping up the, op- uh, the opportunities that she gets. But, it, yeah, it's just whether they get the right match for her Definitely. in there. I hope the matchmakers have been good to these guys. Yeah. But then the other interesting point that you just bring up is that some of these have had shared management or now share management Mm -hmm. and you know do you think there's been any like pre-arranged you know a bit like what you do with your best mate when you're like if we both get to 40 and we're not married (laughs) do you think there's some of that going on like if we don't find something you and me we too that's what makes it 
interesting this and exciting this series because we've got we've got this whole lineup where there could have been a lot of backstage deals being yeah. done and and I know that some people think oh no that's rubbish we don't want that we want it to be you know this organic you know this is it's just yeah. all the sparks are flying in front of you it's all real but actually it does make it sort of more dramatic the fact that they've had these they could have Demi and Mitch said right we're not going to work on the outside but in the villa yeah. why don't we team up and it makes them a stronger power couple because if they yeah. are presenting strong to the public and to their other islanders it means they're going to get further on in, in the in the show oh i just feel so torn about it because <laughs> like as a like an unashamed fan of the show i you know you want to believe it and mm. things but then I equally know. I mean, as we've said, it's all about it being a great program, isn't it? Yeah. Which I think it promises to be. Absolutely. I'm so excited to find out the bombshells coming up. Are there any names that you that spring out at you of, of who you'd like to see in there? Yes. So Megan Barton Hansen, I think she's like one of the all time greats. Love to see her. Theo Campbell, he was a me- he was a probably only in there for a week on his series, but do you remember he God, stirred he made an all impact. that drama yeah, yeah. with um Johnny and um, Camilla mm-hmm. and all of that. So yeah, I'd love to see them. I'm going for Faye Winter. I think oh, yeah. she will be great. She'll go in there. Um, I think all guns blazing still. She does say that she's calmed down, um, but I think she she's just still a very powerful woman and mm. should just go for it in there and not hold back. You know, go in there and actually um, say exactly what she thinks. Yeah. Um, so I think that will be. It. She'll be one to watch as she goes Ooh. in. Well, yeah. certainly the weather is suitable for us to all sit at home and just binge Love Island. So yeah. that's and good. That's what is so lovely about this series being in January is that we get to just, you know, okay, it's horrible and miserable outside. We'll just be on the sofa, snuggled in up. In our jumpers. In our, in our <laughs> granny chic jumpers. <laughs> yeah, You've inspired sure. me, I'm going to go get one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we'll wrap up. <laughs> Fab. Talk, speaking of wrapping up, we're going to yeah. wrap up this and um, we'll be back every weekday to talk about all of the drama that happens in the episode the night before. Yeah, who's faking it, who feeling it, um, all of that goss, all the drama coming up. And we'll also be sharing with you the showbiz exclusives that we have here at The Sun, the bombshells that are coming up, any of the behind the scenes drama. I'm sure we're going to hear from, from some exes, which I can't wait for. All of those undiscovered bits and bobs that have gone on. Yeah. And we'll be sharing all of that with you at home. Um, so join us as Amanda says every day every weekday uh for cracking on with the sun i can't believe we just get to talk about this i day. know it's like the whatsapp <laughs> instead of voice noting <laughs> it'll just be here instead so <laughs> that could be trouble i just had a moment of like yeah. oh no this could be terrible yeah <laughs> Brilliant. So Love Island All Stars kicks off on Monday the 15th at 9 o'clock and we'll be with you every weekday for Cracking On With The Sun. And uh, yeah, go get yourself a jumper. (laughs) 